All right. Hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, and uh, welcome. So, um, here we are, ready to get started on a new lesson. Today, it's actually the third class of this uh, module. So, here we go. All right. So, hello, hello, and good evening. Good evening, and welcome to this lesson. So tonight we are going to be working on um, class number three. And well, hopefully, you know, this evening we're going to be able to learn more about the passive voice, how to use the passive, and also a little bit about present continuous. And um, we are also going to be touching base on how to use this important tense in English. English has this characteristics or these um, tenses where of course, they are very useful and they come in very handy when it comes to expressing ideas that are, um, you know, about or following a specific thing. For example, when we are talking about um, present continuous, normally what it does is that it helps us to talk about future situations or ongoing situations. Now, I know that future in English is a little bit complicated because we have already seen um, or probably, you know, you have already studied about will and about going to, which are like the main um, ways in which people express um, future in English. But the continuous, it's uh, another way in which you can do basically the same as you would do with going to. Um, the difference between the two is that when you use going to, there is like a need, like a like a uh, it's necessary to use going to do so that the sentence works. But when you use the continuous, it is a more natural way of expressing future events. Now, the difference between um a continuous sentence that is about an ongoing situation and a continuous sentence that is going to be about the future has to do a lot with time. And of course, if we're talking about the future, it's uh, of course that it's going to be related to time. But where or how do we make these sentences relate to time? Well, by using something that we know in English or that we should know as time phrases. These time phrases are simply a reference to a future situation. Like, for example, if I have a simple sentence that is just about um, something that has to do with um, something that I'm doing. For example, right now I'm speaking, I'm teaching a class. That is something that I'm doing at this moment. However, if I tell you about something that I will do tomorrow or that I will do later tonight, I will have to add that specific time phrase or that specific moment in the future. And then the sentence that I say right now is going to have a meaning in the future. So that is the difference that exists between using um, present continuous and um, present continuous with future expressions. Now, this relates a little bit to the topic that we are going to be touching tonight, which is the past continuous. When we talk about past continuous, we are going to be um, talking about situations in the past that uh, were happening when something else took place. So past continuous is like, for example, um, as if right now we had an electricity outage, um, I will have to say something like, I was teaching my class when the electricity went off. So that means that I was doing something, but then something else interrupted the activity that I was developing. So that is um, past continuous with simple past. And then you have activities that are interrupted by other activities. So that is like a topic we're going to be, you know, discussing in a bit. Right now, all that I want to do is to go ahead with the questions that I tell you that I will be asking at the beginning of the class. And for tonight, the question is very simple. We are going to talk about free time activities. Like what is something you like to do when you have some free time? And if you allow me, I'll start by saying that in my case, when I have some free time, what I like to do is that I like to play video games. You know, I like to spend time um, with my friends and I like to listen to music or maybe um, something else that I could mention 
is learning new things. That's something that, um, you know, it's it's a, a passion of mine. So yeah, when I have some spare time, that's something that I do. But now I want to start hearing from you. And I think that I would like to start maybe uh, by hearing from Edwin. In your case, Edwin, what is an activity that you like to do on your free time or something that what is your favorite activity to um, to do on your free time? Hello, hello, Edwin Tamayo. Hi. Hey there. Um, in my free time, um, I go into to the field, uh, play soccer, and every Saturday mm -hmm. in the afternoon. Um, um and and the Sunday I I go to stadium to watch a match. Okay, and what uh, team do you support? Excuse me. What team do you support? Um, uh, Platense. Oh. Here, Zacatecoluca. Zacatecoluca. Uh huh. Okay. Great. Yes. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Good. Very okay. good. Thank you for sharing. Thank you very much. Um, how about in the case of uh, Rodrigo Mendoza? What are the activities that you like to do on your spare time? Uh, hi, teacher. Hey uh, in my case, um, I like listening uh, music. I love electronic music. Uh, in the weekends, I like uh, to go uh, to the stadium uh, because I, I like the football. Uh, play and watch the the match too mm -hmm. and I like to run in the park uh, but uh, I like to run in the park uh, for example once a week is not every day but I like to do different activities teacher okay and when it comes to going to the to the stadium what team do you support when you go to the stadium a uh, fast. Oh, okay, fast. nice. So you support my my rival, yeah, our uh, all time rival. Because in my case, I'm an aguilucho. So yeah, I you know in in my case, I haven't been to the stadium, uh, since last season. Since last, um, uh, I think that when the accident happened in 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 El Cucatlan with Alianza. I think that that was the last time that I went to um to watch a, a game here in in San Miguel, because yeah, it has been a long time since I went to the stadium for the last time. But okay, great, very good. So yeah, going to the park it's also something nice, you know, running. Uh, as you said, maybe not every day, but you know, doing some running, um, because it it can keep you healthy. It can help you uh stay in a way better you know um state of being. So, yeah, but still, it's great to to have some activities to occupy your mind and your days because that is, of course, going to help you um, with, you know, not getting a stress or probably getting away from the stress for a bit. So, yeah. How about in the case of uh, Raul? In your case, Raul Ramirez, what is or what are your free time activities or the things that you like to do on your free time? Okay, uh, my favorite activities, for example, uh, I like to watch uh, different sports. For example, I like to watch in NFL. Uh -huh. And also I like to I like to uh, play soccer. Uh, also um, I like uh, in the weekend I like to to visit uh, different places in El Salvador. Uh, when I when I have a uh, a lot of uh, a little bit time time, mm -hmm. and I don't know I I like to 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 um to play uh, in my Nintendo Switch for example and yeah. and when I and sometimes I like to learn other 
other courses uh, or other um, topics oh. about my profession. All right. Very good. Nice. Yeah, that's great. You know, always keeping your mind busy. Um, so, yeah, I can tell you have many activities, many passions that um, you follow. And that's great. Um, getting to visit or getting to know our country. Uh, in my case, is one of my favorite activities as well. Um, also, well, playing soccer, that's something that I haven't done in a long time. I want to because actually in the last few months, there has been a team organized here in my colony. And I want to start playing again because it has been a long time since I last played soccer. And um, yeah, I would like to do that again because, yeah, I mean, maybe we're not professionals, but we still enjoy the game. And watching many sports, that's also something that I do. I do not do it anymore as often as I used to because, well, maybe you will understand. Now I have the classes and all that. So it's like uh, less spare time at night, which is like the moment that I normally use to um, to do those sort of things. But still, it's great and it's enjoyable to um, to like practice many things and, and do many things at, uh, you know, at a time. Um, so very good. There was something that I wanted to share, but it slipped my mind. I forgot what it was. Anyway, let's move on. Um, how about Jonathan? In your case, Jonathan Marroquin, what is or what are your favorite activities on your spare time? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, confirm. Well, I love photography, going for a walk to hills or volcanoes. I love coffee and listen to music. And um, I enjoy learning new things about programming, music, and psychology. It's uh -huh. not my career, but I like a lot the psychology. Great. Very good. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's exactly what I was going to mention. The fact of like learning new things. Um, in my case, well, I graduated, I have my degree as an English teacher or like as an English professional. But, you know, I I don't know. I, I know that it's not like the best thing to share this, but I do not necessarily work full time as a teacher. Like my main job right now has many occupations. And it's because, well, I have always been into learning new things that I started working as an electrician, I am now an electrician. I am also uh, an air conditioning technician. Like, for example, the last few days, I have been working mostly on air conditioning systems. And, uh, well, something that is, that is easy, but still you need, you know, some skills to do that is painting and also um, the ceilings. So those are the things that I do, like on my day-to-day -day basis. Those are like the activities or the, 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 my job, I would say, it's that. But, um, of course, teaching is a big part of um, what I like to do because I like to share my English with people. And, um, you know, I like it when I can establish these links between people. But, um, yeah, learning new things. I Most nights, I love to, like, dig a little bit into, into Google and try to find, like, for example, now that I'm really into this air conditioning thing, I love to find like details on how a system can fail, what to do when this happens. And uh, like, there is so much information out there that sometimes we just, we just simply, you know, become too lazy to try to gather some of that information. So I feel like um, occupying our time and our minds into learning new things is probably the best thing that we can do because um, that's maybe, and maybe it's going to be hard for us to find the moment when those, those skills become useful. But believe me, there is always going to be a chance for you to use all the things that you learned. And, um, well, as you said, learning new things, in your case, um, Jonathan, learning about psychology, something that, as you mentioned, is not necessarily related to your degree or to your career. But still, you like it. And uh, there will be a time, and I'm sure that there will be a time when that is going to become useful in your life. So yeah, learning new things is probably one of the best things that we can do. And you guys are actually a proof of that because you're here learning English. Now, how about we hear from Karen? In your case, Karen Leiva, what are some of your favorite activities to do on your spare time? Hello, good night, everyone. Good night. Um, well, I don't have a lot of free time but uh, when I have um, 
time for myself besides to go out with my son or work in some uh, homeworks of my son. Um, I like to spend time with my friends. I like to go out and take a coffee, at least a coffee or a food. And um, also I, I like to watch a TV a lot. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to watch TV and, and just enjoy all of the Netflix series, for example. But when I have time, yes, I just take time to rest. Okay, great. That is also very advisable. You know, when you have a busy life and when you have many things going on, uh, whenever you have, I don't know, a, a couple hours, that you can spend simply laying down on your bed or, or I don't know, on a hammock, take them, you know, take them and try to like just rest because yeah, your body can grow tired if you are always pushing it into new activities. So yeah, yeah. resting is also very important. So good. very Thank good. You. Thank you very much for sharing. How about you, Rodrigo Hernandez? Hello, Rodrigo Hernandez. Okay. Well, the thing is that he had his hand up, so I, 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 I thought he wanted to participate. But well, uh, so that is it for the questions tonight. We are going to move into the topic for this evening. I don't know. So far, do you guys have any questions, anything that you would like to clarify? Maybe a word or a phrase you have found on the road um, that you didn't understand or that you would like to know to like get an explanation for? Or is everything going um, clear? Because, for example... Um, when you guys happen to have doubts about the exercises on the platform, well, um, you can let me know and we can like work it together, you know, so that we can get to a, to a solution. Um, so yeah, anything of that going on? Because if I'm not mistaken, I think tomorrow is going to be the first, um, checkup. And I think they're going to be requesting you to finish section one and section two. Tonight, we're barely going to be. Um, work into the middle of section two. But if you happen to have any questions regarding to, uh, you know, those topics that we may have not touched base with just yet, I will be more than glad to help you out because, well, that's part of the process. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, at the beginning of the lesson is probably like the best, you know, option so that we can get that like out of the way before we start into the topics. Uh, but so, any questions, anything that you would like to know about the exercises? Okay, seems like no then. All right, then let's move on into tonight's topic. So, here we have it. Oh, wait, this is important. So, we were talking about this last night, right? How to use the passive voice, but without using um, by. So, that is a simplification of the passive voice. Here, what all that you do is simply not um, use by and not mention a subject that is like responsible for the activity at the end of the sentence. So I think that uh, basically ended up being clear. Now we are going to move into this, which is the one that I was mentioning before starting the, the uh, with the question this evening. And it's the past continuous versus the simple past. So those two are very different because past continuous is referred or is used to refer to activities that you were performing at a specific time in the past. So past continuous is going to be about something that you were doing at a specific moment in the past, okay? Um, and just to be honest, the most common way to use it is actually in the one that we have it here, which is an activity that you were performing that was interrupted by something else. So that's something that I want you to have in mind because it happens almost all the time. When you use the past continuous, you are probably 90% of the time going to end the sentence with a simple past um, sentence or clause that is going to basically interrupt the activity that you were performing before that thing happened. So the examples that we have are, well, well the definition first. We use the past continuous for an action in progress in the past. So. Um, this is like kind of like a general explanation, but as I said, 
it refers to something that you were doing at a specific moment in the past. And then um, use the simple past for a completed action. So simple past is used for a completed action. Um, simple past and present perfect are very similar in that. They are both used to talk about completed actions. Now, the difference between the two is that the simple past normally includes a time frame, like a time period when something happened. And the present perfect is simply about the now, something that you have already done, but uh, the time or the moment when that happened is not relevant to the conversation or is not relevant to the sentence. Therefore, it's not even mentioned at all in the sentence. So um, here we have it, the first one. I was watching a good movie, but I fell asleep before the end. So this is me almost every Friday. Um, so yeah, I was watching a good movie, but I fell asleep before the end. So if you see here, this is something that was taking place at a, at a moment in the past. You were doing an activity, but then this activity was interrupted by something else that happened in the simple past. This is like a completed thing because, um, well, here, if you had actually watched the movie till the end, it would not be um, in past continuous. There would be no need for you to use past continuous. But when we use past continuous is normally when you will want to explain something else that happened or interrupted the activity that we were doing. Because if the movie was completed, if you actually watched the whole movie, it will simply be a simple past sentence. And you will have to say, I watched a good movie. And that will be it. I watched a good movie. Of course, then you can include like when this happened. For example, you could say, I watched a good movie last Tuesday. And that will be, you know, a simple past sentence because the action was never interrupted by something else. But when you are, or when you actually get interrupted or when something else gets in the way, well, that's when you have to use the past continuous. Another example of this, we have, I was working at a boring job when someone offered me a much better one. So I was working at a boring job when someone offered me a much better one. So here, you were doing something. This is not necessarily referred to one specific moment. And that's the magic about it. Because it doesn't have to be just about like, you know, like a, like a 20 or 30 minute period. It can be years and years. The activity can cover or like the, like the continuous thing can cover something that you, you have been performing for a long time in the past. But then this gets interrupted by something else. And here, the something else is that, well, someone else offered this person a much better job. Now, please, guys, take into consideration that I will be requesting examples for these sentences. So while we, um, you know, go ahead and look at the last example, start creating your own because I will be um, starting to request your examples in a bit. So here we have the last example. While I was shopping one day, a celebrity walked into the store. So here, this is not necessarily interrupted. Okay, then there, that's something that we uh, must also clarify here. This activity was not necessarily interrupted by the appearance of a celebrity, but it is something that was kind of like a highlight, you know, something important that happened while you were doing something else. And in those occasions, then you can also use the past continuous. Let's say that you were having just a regular job, uh, I'm sorry, just a regular day at your job. And then all of a sudden, a tree fell down into the next uh, building or the building right next to your job. So that would be like, a situation that was not expected, a situation that was like a surprise. Uh, and you will have to say something like, while I was working a regular day at my job, a tree fell down on the building next door or right on the next building. So that's something that kind of happened while you were doing the other thing. It doesn't mean that at the end of the day, you didn't finish like working or this person didn't uh, finish shopping 
because of the celebrity, but it's a highlight. It's something that is important that happens in between, you know, the situation that you were living. And as you were actually performing that activity, that's why we use the past continuous there. So yeah, um, you can use it, as I said, in like the regular way I was, or, um, you know, you were doing something, or you can also use while I was. Now here, this while, of course, is going to mean um, that this activity was not necessarily interrupted and changed because here, if you see, I was watching the movie is something that was interrupted and completely changed um, in the in the next activity because you fell asleep. The movie didn't have any relevance anymore. Um, I was working a boring job is something that completely changed when this person decided to go for the one that he considered to be a much better one. So that means that it was interrupted and then he moved on into doing something else. But this one, when we say while I was doing something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was interrupted, but it was there, like it was there in the middle of the thing. And uh, it kind of became important. So that's why, you know, you mentioned it as like a interruption or an special thing that took place at a specific moment. So yeah, while I was shopping one day, a celebrity walked into the store. So that means, you know, that this is like a highlight from that um, moment. And the example that I gave you, like while I was um, working a regular day at my job, a tree fell down on the building next door. That will also be one of those examples when um, you have like, like a, uh, how can we refer to this? Like one of those highlights or one of those important moments, you know, one of those peak moments. But now, let's see, what are your examples? What are the things that you can come up with when it comes to talking about activities that are interrupted by other activities? Let's see. Uh, maybe we can start by hearing from, uh, well, uh, Rodrigo Mendoza. How about you, Rodrigo? Do you have any example in mind? that you can mention with this um, structure, having the past continuous and then something else interrupt in the middle? Uh, okay, I was, uh, hmm? um, I was running. In a bad place and then you can say when uh, y ahí es que pasa la otra actividad I was running in a bad place when when Pensémoslo en español. ¿Cómo podría hacer esta oración? Estaba corriendo en un lugar peligroso, en un lugar malo. ¿Cuándo? ¿Cómo podríamos terminarlo? Maybe when I hurt my knee, you know, it's like it's it's complicated because yeah, I mean, I was I was running and then I hurt my knee. So I was running in a bad place. Uh, aquí vamos a ponerle, ¿cómo sería? Tal vez odd, sí. I was running in an odd, in an odd place. Um, yes, es otro. So I was running through a, a odd, an odd place when I hurt my knee. O sea, sería que estaba corriendo eh, por un lugar raro, digamos, el odd se puede utilizar para hablar de cosas que son raras, ¿verdad? Entonces, when I hurt my knee, cuando me eh, molesté la rodilla, sí. Ese sería, podría ser un ejemplo, ¿verdad? I was running through an odd place when I hurt my knee. All right. Um, oh, una cosa importante, esta, esta palabra es uno de esos verbos eh, irregulares y no sé si ustedes ya hayan aprendido acerca de ellos, supongo que sí, pero los verbos irregulares son verbos, ¿verdad?, que 
eh, pues cada uno de ellos tiene su cambio específico, cada uno de ellos cambia en su, pro, en su propia forma, eh, y pues este es uno de esos que cambia, más bien, que no cambia, sí, o sea, los verbos regulares son aquellos que ustedes pueden utilizar eh, en presente, que podría ser, digamos, el decir dance, sí, y en pasado ya vamos a saber que simplemente es dance y dance, ¿verdad? O sea, en pasado simple y pasado participio. Pero los verbos irregulares, pues cada uno de ellos tiene su cambio. Por ejemplo, al otro día hablábamos acerca de este verbo, el read, ¿sí? Que en pasado se escribe igual, pero se pronuncia diferente. O sea, read, en pasado se escribe read también las mismas letras, pero se pronuncia como read. Y también, de hecho, es válida esta otra escritura para ese verbo. Sí, ustedes pueden escribirlo um, read en presente, read y read en pasado. Entonces, el verbo hurt es uno de esos, ¿verdad? Ahora, les digo esto porque yo he visto ya algunas personas que lo utilizan de esta forma. El heard it, sí, heard it. Um, ¿Qué tan válido es? Bueno, si la computadora lo reconoce, parece que quizás sí sea válido. Pero eh, entiendo yo que más que todo eso, esa versión del verbo lo usan o la usan cuando eh, se trata de situaciones amorosas. O sea, como cuando yo, me, digamos que me lastimaron, ¿verdad? Del corazón. Más que todo así es que he visto yo que utilicen el hurt it. Pero de ahí, por lo general, simplemente, oh, bueno, y ahí está el error ya. Ajá, ahí está. Que le, la, no lo reconoce necesariamente. Sí, sería nada más hurt. When I hurt my knee, porque ese es uno de esos, ¿verdad? Verbos irregulares que no necesariamente va a cambiar. No, espero que no quede la idea de que los verbos irregulares todos son aquellos que no cambian. Ya les digo, los verbos irregulares son aquellos que cada uno en su forma cambia de forma diferente, cambia de, de forma extraña. Entonces, y que pues básicamente lo único que tenemos que hacer con ellos es memorizarnos todos y cada uno, ¿verdad? Para saber bien cómo se usa. Bueno, veamos. ¿Algún otro ejemplo? Any, any one of you guys who is a volunteer to provide an example? Jonathan, all right. I was playing Fortnite when I watched a cinematic video of this game. Okay. Uh, aquí sería about this game. Okay. Mm -hmm. About this game. About this game. Yeah. I was playing Fortnite. Ahora, aquí viene una cuestión un tanto compleja. Sí. Porque esto, I, I was playing Fortnite. When I watch a cinematic video about this game. Um, what do we mean with this sentence? ¿Cuál es el, el, ¿Qué fue lo que pasó en sí? Estaba jugando el videojuego cuando vi un video sobre... Es como la historia, por eso si no me video es como... Ajá, fue como en el, medio, en el, en el medio del juego. Sí. Oh, ok, ok. So, in this case, um, tendría que ser un poco diferente. Que el detalle es que vaya. Aquí la cosa es que utilizamos los dos verbos que estamos usando son verbos que vienen eh, de manera consciente, son cosas que queremos hacer, digamos, que nosotros mismos buscamos hacer. Entonces, um, podría ser algo más como algo accidental. Este, en lugar de decir I watched, sería también, sería más bien decir como um, when my, ¿cómo decirlo? When I was in your, no, when, uh, Is interrupted. Yeah, when the game interrupted. Sí. When the game interrupted uh, my... ¿Cómo que se llama partida? My match. Ajá, uh -huh, my match. Thank you. When the game interrupted my match with a cinematic... Cinematic video uh -huh. game. Ajá. Uh -huh. oh. Cinematic video about it. Nada más. Yeah, when It's the game is so different. Right? Yeah, because the thing is that we are uh, here, we are doing something. Okay, we are doing something consciously, something that we want to do. But then what happens here with the present um, sentence is something that we don't necessarily expect it to happen. It's something that happens all of a sudden or that happens by accident. So, for example, hurting your knee is not something that you plan to do, it's not something that you do consciously. It's something that happens as an accident. 
And here, the same thing. Um, you're not expecting the game to interrupt your match with a video or a cinematic video about it. You are expecting to continue playing, right? So this is like an accident, like something that you were not expecting to happen. So that's like the, the way in which we use the past continuous versus the simple past. It's like an interruption of something you were doing. But when you say, when I watched, it would be something that you did on purpose. Like you were actually planning to do it. So the picture that came to my mind when you said that was that you were playing here, but you had like another screen over there and you were watching the video over there. So I like I'm playing and I'm also watching because I'm doing both things at the same time consciously. Um, okay, Rodrigo, tell me. I got it. Okay, you okay, great. Yes, Rodrigo. Me quiero reivindicar, teacher. Okay. <laughs> una oración. That's okay. Uh, yes. Um, I was listening music. Listening music. Uh, when my mother turned it off the radio. Okay. Turned off the radio. Great. That is a good one. Muy bien. Aquí está, ¿verdad? ¿Qué les digo? It's something you were doing some. You were actually, well, you know, trying to enjoy your music maybe. But then, well, all of a sudden, without you expecting it, your mom simply decided, okay, it's too loud. I'm not turning it off. I'm going to just plug it off and like, I don't want to hear any more noises. You know, so yeah, that's the way in which we are supposed to use the past continuous versus the simple prep, simple past activities. It's something that um, interrupts or causes a disruption. And probably that's like the best way of describing it because it's something that causes a disruption, you know, causes uh, a, a, a special thing, but not a, a something that you want it to happen. But it's something that goes probably against your desires at that time. So, yeah. Now, how about, oh, wait, yes, Karen, I was actually gonna gonna ask you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I'm thinking about the second uh, sentence and I was thinking in a different way to say it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it can work if we say I was playing Fortnite when the game when, uh, when the game was interrupted by a cinematic video about it. Yes, yes, that is a, a, another another way. Great. When the game yeah. was, was interrupted mm -hmm. by a cinematic video about it. Mm -hmm. About it. Great. Yeah. Very good. Okay, I have my own phrase. Uh -huh. um, yesterday, while I was cooking, my boss called me. Okay. And I burned the food. <laughs> okay, did, did that burned... actually happen? Is oh. it's not burnt yeah, with burnt. heat yeah. at the end? With, yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. I was actually going back to that. Yeah, okay. burned the food. Uh, did that actually happen? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> okay. Are the you food scared? is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. So yesterday while I was cooking, my boss called me. So here we will uh, mark the division. My boss called me and I burnt the food. All right. Great. Very good. So yesterday while I was cooking, my boss called me and I burnt the food. Nice. Very good. Very, very good example. So yeah, as you see, once again, um, now here, the thing is the, the only thing that uh, kind of like, you know, changes a little bit of the game is that um, we, as I said before, we use while when something was happening, then it was interrupted and then it continues to happen here. The story basically feels like it ends, you know, and on you burning the food. But um, cooking is an activity that, well, if you're honest, it has to be completed. So it's something that at the end of the day, it will continue to happen. Even if you burn the food, you will have to start the process over again. So there is basically no mistake on using while with this because, well, cooking is something that will normally continue even if you burn the food you will have to like do it again so yeah you can of course use why 
So uh, one more example, and we move on to the next one. Uh, maybe we can get one coming from, I don't know, Delmi Gonzalez, maybe? Or probably Raul Ramirez? Mm. Mm. Uh, for example, I was... I was uh, playing my guitar when the when the when the when the when the um, when my sister oh, okay when, me estaba adelantando when, ya. Ajá, when my sister <laughs> when my sister uh, when my sister mm, uh, when my sister came uh, talk uh, talk to me okay uh maybe this called me mm -hmm. call me in the in the okay this is one thing the word call can be used over the phone but it can also be used, you know, like in person, like you are on in one room and the other person is like maybe on the kitchen, living room, any other room in the house, they can also call you. OK, there's something that uh, sometimes maybe it's not clarified because calling is not simply over the phone. You can call someone by like, you know, calling their name like in school or like here, for example, when I'm uh, asking you guys to participate, I'm actually calling you to participate. So, yeah. But yeah, here, <laughs> cuando le dije que me estaba adelantando, it was because I was, you said I was playing my guitar when, and I, I typed uh, when the string, and I was expecting that you were going to say when the string broke, you know, like, eh, una de las cuerdas, que se, que se había roto mm -hmm. una de las cuerdas. Oh. Yeah, so I was actually going, uh, trying to like predict that that was what you were going to say. But yeah, well, when my sister called me. So yeah, it's an interruption. It's something that... Well, you were playing the guitar, but then somebody called you. So it's like, you have to stop the process. You have to stop practice and, well, see what it's, uh, what's it about, you know, or why is the other person calling you? So good. Very good. So I uh, feel like, teacher? yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I have a question. Okay. Regarding the, the, the last sentence, can we also said, talk to me? Mm -hmm. As yeah. he said before. Yes, yes, yes. You can say talk okay. to me. Mm. However, when it's like talked, uh, it will be like we are in the same room. And uh, it's like, it will be kind of weird because the act of talking is like both are agreeing, you know, on the conversation. So mm -hmm. talked, it will be like you are being rude by playing the guitar. Kind of. It will be understood like that. The action will be understood mm. as if you are being rude by playing the guitar because you were having a conversation with the other person. However, call me is like, you know, this person is yelling at you from somewhere else and that distract. But talking is different because talking normally refers to like actually being here, being present in a conversation. So that's why I decided to change talk for call because oh. call will be a natural interruption. However, talking is like an agreed action. Like we both are on the same page that we are talking, that we are, you know, having a conversation. So, yeah. Okay. Ajá. La diferencia principal es esa, o sea, que el, el talk uh -huh. se usa para platicar, o sea, estamos hablando, se supone que estamos uh -huh. platicando, y so sería yo. Ajá, sería yo uh -huh. el, que, el, que, el que hago mal en empezar a tocar la guitarra, porque pues estamos hablando. En uh -huh. cambio, en la otra sería una interrupción completa, porque pues estoy tocando la guitarra cuando ella me llamó, o sea, me habló y me uh -huh. dijo, hey, no sé, eh, Raúl, ¿verdad? Y cualquier cosa. Entonces, Eso interrumpe la, la acción principal o la acción inicial. Mm -hmm. She call you from a different place. Ajá, uh -huh, like from a, mm -hmm. from a different room or like, yeah, or maybe mm -hmm. from the street or something like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because talking, as I said, it would be like we are in the same room. We are like mm -hmm. actually. We're in the middle of a conversation. A conversation. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be like the, the, the thing there. But yeah, good. Very good. Very good question. Thank you very much. All right, uh, so let's move on here. We simply are going to see a little bit about how these sentences are supposed to be 
um, structured, and we have that for the past continuous tense. In a positive way, we're going to have to ask, add a subject, a was or where, because it depends on like what the subject is, the version of the verb that you're going to use. Then you use the verb plus ing, and something that these structures always miss is the complement, because basically all sentences in English are going to include some sort of complement. The complement can be as simple as saying something like this, all morning, that's the complement here. And of course, the complement, what it does is that it provides more um, surrounding details about the action. So it helps you understand the action better by providing more, like um, a more clear view of what was happening. Here, the example that we have is she was cooking all morning. So that's basically um, the action. She was cooking all morning. And as you see here, once again, we have uh, one of those actions that is something that took place in the past at a specific moment in the past. But uh, in this case, it is not necessarily interrupted. As I said before, if, um, <clears throat> sorry. The 90% of these sentences are going to be interrupted by something else. However, there is still that 10% of sentences that are going to be used on their own, like this one here. She was cooking all morning. So when can we use this sort of sentence? How do you imagine using this sentence? Or in what context do you think you will ever use something like this? Um, Edwin, what do you think? ¿Cuándo podría usted utilizar una frase como esta? Decirle a alguien, ella estuvo cocinando toda la mañana. ¿Cuándo la podría utilizar? Me dice. Uh -huh. Bueno, quizás cuando la... No sé, ¿verdad? Eh, cuando la... La ve haciendo eso. Ok. No sé, como okay. como, como probarlo. Si no, también podría ser en el caso de que, digamos, ven, estamos como una reunión, otra persona ve que alguien está cansado, ¿verdad? Entonces, y pregunta, like, why are you tired? Or why, why is she so tired? Y ahí podría decir, oh, she was cooking all morning. Sí, o sea, estuvo cocinando toda la mañana, entonces por eso está cansada. Podríamos utilizarla entonces en ese tipo de contextos, cuando estamos explicando el porqué de que alguien eh, reaccione de cierta forma, digamos. Um, so yeah, it's like she was cooking all morning and that's why, you know, she's tired or she looks tired at least. So uh, the next one, uh, for the negative, we're going to use it with a subject, of course, uh, respecting, you know, if it's a singular or plural, we're going to use what or where, then we use not, and then the verb plus ing and the complement at the end. So here the complement is a little bit longer because we're going to have a little bit of a, of a longer complement. And uh, we see that, oh, wait, sorry. It's uh, when he came home. Yeah, when he came home, it's a complement. Now, the sentence itself is going to be, she was not sleeping. She was not sleeping when, she, when he came home. So it means that, um, you know, it's something, here it is something that is interrupted. And as you can see, and as I uh, mentioned previously, most of these activities are going to be interrupted by something else. So she was not sleeping. That's something that the person was not doing. So it isn't necessarily interrupted, but it would have been. It would have been interrupted if she was. If she was sleeping when he came home, well, maybe she will have to like wake up uh, because he had gone home. So yeah, she was not sleeping when he came home. But as it is negative, you can place both um actions on the same sentence and none of them is going to be interrupted by the other they're simply going to work you know well together so yeah and then we have the last one uh it was it's the question form and when it comes to questions they will have to be something like was she sleeping when he came home so it's like simply trying to clarify or trying to um get an idea of the action that was taking place when the other thing happened. So this is also very common. Like for example, 
um let's say that you have a a running faucet in your house you know it's it's like it's been dripping water the whole day so you want to find out when it started and let's say that um your son gets home at 12 and you get home at 5 but when you get home you notice it so you can ask him was this running when you get home was this running when you got home so that means that you know you're trying to find out either whether or not the activity or that specific thing was actually happening when well he did the other part which was arriving home so here as i said it's something simple the first one is simply to refer to something that someone was doing the second one the negative is simply to uh mention two activities that could have y eso es algo bien importante que podrían haber sido interrumpidas una por la otra pero cuando son negativos siempre que utilizamos el pasado continuo y negativo y claro eh, unido este con una oración del pasado simple siempre que lo utilizamos así vamos a estar refiriéndonos a actividades que podrían haberse afectado pero que no se afectaron ok siempre 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 que utilicemos el pasado continuo negativo Vamos a estar hablando de actividades que se pudieron afectar, pero que no se afectaron, porque pues la primera, que es la actividad que estaba tomando lugar, como es negativa, no estaba tomando lugar. So, yeah. Y luego la otra es básicamente una forma que utilizamos con el pasado continuo para poder cerciorarnos de si cierta actividad estaba tomando lugar en un momento específico mientras la otra persona desarrollaba otra actividad. O sea, por ejemplo, eh, decir... Si la música estaba sonando mientras dormías, ¿sí? O sea, podría ser, ¿verdad? Was the music playing while you were asleep? Ahora, ese es un ejemplo un tanto, o sea, que se me vino ahorita nada más a la mente, porque sería bien complejo que alguien les pueda decir sí o no. O sea, sería bien difícil porque, pues, la persona está dormida, así que podría ser complicado que les diga que sí o que no. Pero igual, eh, así va, va a funcionar, ¿verdad? La utilización de las preguntas. Sí, del pasado continuo. Principalmente se van a utilizar para cerciorarnos de si algo estaba sucediendo mientras la otra actividad lo interrumpió. Sí, causó esa interrupción. All right. So, any questions regarding this, regarding the um, the past continuous? Okay. Seems like we do not have any questions. All is clear. Oh, okay. Great. So, we're going to move into um storytelling so i know that we are oh, sorry that we have pending um the conversation but uh well i didn't actually pass it into blank so it's a still blurry therefore you know it's not recommended so we are more likely going to be doing that tomorrow um so yeah now we're gonna go with storytelling so here some adverbs are often used in storytelling to emphasize that something interesting is about to happen. Which of these adverbs are positive, which are negative, and which are neutral? So in your opinion, I don't know if you guys are good storytellers or if you like to read even, um, but you know, it's uh, something that takes place very often when, um, when what should I call it? Uh, when you have like a story on the way and when the story is about to introduce like a turn of events something that is uh, a special thing happening for example um coincidentally what do you think about this coincidentally uh would it be a neutral a positive or a negative adverb to use, coincidentally. I will say neutral. Yeah, I consider this neutral as well. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, coincidentally simply um, introduces an activity. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's something good or something bad. It's just a result of something. So coincidentally, it's just like a result of what you did. If, you, if what you did was bad, probably it will be negative. If what you did was good, probably it's going to be positive. So very good. So coincidentally is uh, very likely to be a neutral. Um, ooh, sorry. 
is very likely to be a um a neutral adverb. How about fortunately? Fortunately. What do you think? Fortunately. Is it positive? Is it negative? How would you see it? I would say it's positive. Yeah, I will do too. Because, yeah, uh, fortunately, normally will be used when you are introducing something that is like a lucky moment, like something nice that is about to happen to the character. And it's like, you know, when um, probably this character just realized that um, he maybe had lost his wallet, but he still had enough money to get back home. Like, you know, he still had um, some money, some cash to get back home. So it's like some fortune in between of the disaster. But yeah, fortunately. How about luckily? What do you think? Luckily, is it uh, positive? Is it negative? Is it neutral? For me, it's positive as well. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. So yes, um, luckily, once again, it would sound, you know, as if it's a moment of sudden luck, a moment of, uh, um, well, certain, mo certain energy running your or going your way because, well, you had one of those moments when the rest of the things probably were not going the best, but then you had that moment when, you know, it's it's something nice or something nice happens. How about uh, miraculously? Miraculously. What do you think, Jonathan? Is it something positive? Is it something negative or something um, neutral? I think this is positive. Okay. Luckily. Uh, miraculously, well, it could because, well, it relates to a miracle. And normally a miracle is seen as something positive or something that, you know, um, saves maybe a character from something bad happening. So I would say, I will also say that miraculously is something positive. How about, mm -hmm. how about in the case of sadly? Well, I think that it's one of the easiest ones, right? Sadly, the, the whole word basically says it. Because, yeah, sadly is something that, well, um, is not good when you're sad or when you do something that is sad. Well, it's not a good sensation. Therefore, sadly would have to be, in my opinion, something negative. Because, well, it's very difficult that something good comes after um, saying sadly. Now, how about strangely? Strangely. Is it something positive, negative, or something neutral? For me, it's okay. like, well, it could be neutral and mm -hmm. negative. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Yeah, it could be like a bit of both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a bit of both because strangely, um, I see it more as a neutral thing, but it could, you know, work as a negative introduction as well. Because things that are strange are normally things unknown and things unknown, well, end up leading to things that are that become dangerous or that are not um, good at the end of the day. So yeah, it's a little bit more neutral than negative, but it's there. You know, it's in the terrain of um, the negative and the neutral sort of thing. And how about suddenly? Well, with suddenly, I will have to go uh, with the idea that suddenly is neutral. Because something that happens all of a sudden, well, it's not always good. It's not always bad. Uh, introducing something that happens suddenly simply refers, you know, to like something that is surprising. Something that, oh, well, the same thing that happens with the next one, which is surprisingly. So, yeah, surprisingly, in my opinion, is also something um, neutral. Because it doesn't necessarily... Um, mean that it's going to be bad or good suddenly and surprisingly are both basically the same thing and then kind of the same goes for unexpectedly however i feel like unexpectedly leads a little bit more towards being positive than negative because things that are unexpected well are normally 
they become things that are, you know, good or positive. And the last one, unfortunately, the same as sadly, you know, unfortunately, it basically stays the whole thing itself. Unfortunately, is something, you know, that is sad. As for example, right now, unfortunately, we need to finish the class because, well, the time <laughs> is up. So, yeah. Um, so, all I have to do now is simply thank you guys very much for your attention and the participation you have had on this evening. Tomorrow, we are going to be having a class. That is something that I was forgetting to mention because we started on a Tuesday. So, it means that tomorrow we are going to be having a class. Um, yeah, the rest of the weeks are expected to work, you know, as um, as advertised from Monday to Thursday, but tomorrow we are having a class. Así que sí, mañana, ¿verdad? Eh, vamos a tener que, pues, de cierta forma cubrirlo de lunes para no tener que trabajar más adelante una semana completa, ¿verdad? Entonces, mañana tendríamos clase a la misma hora, sin ningún problema. So, I hope to see you tomorrow, guys, and, you know, I hope you have an amazing rest of your night. And uh, yeah, see you tomorrow then. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.